Eight billion dollars, that's how much Saturday's gas deal between Italy and Libya's Tripoli-based government is worth. The agreement, signed during a visit by Italy's Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni, will tap Libya's offshore gas reserves, boosting both the domestic market and exports. But analysts warn that any deal with Libya comes with risks, where a deep political divide is paralyzing the government and raising risks of renewed violence. Under the deal, Italian energy giant Eni will develop two offshore gas fields with goals of reaching an output plateau of 21 million cubic meters per day by 2026. The chief of Libya's National Oil Corporation hailed the deal as the country's most important energy investment in a quarter century. Prime Minister Meloni, who was on an energy trip to Algeria a week earlier, is working to shore up alternatives to Russian gas. Moscow, which also has close ties with Algeria and Libya's eastern government, is currently seeing its energy exports to Europe dry up over its continuing assault on Ukraine. And now to further discuss the energy of rivalry in North Africa. Joining me now from Paris is Abdenur Toumi. He is a researcher at the Orsam Center for Middle Eastern and North African Studies. And from London, Umberto Provazio. He is an associate fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So Abdenur, what do you make of the rising interest by Western powers in bringing in Libya's vast energy potential back onto the global markets? What has changed? Actually, the, the, the direct answer is the uh, latest development in the uh, war in U Ukraine. And uh, the impact of, the, of this war on the notably the European countries, but has uh, affected the entire uh, international market. So in, in, in this sense, I mean, we saw the latest uh, development of mobility of the European uh, leaders and notably the uh, Italian Prime Minister, uh, Miss Meloni, I mean, who just, uh, I mean, she's on the move and she just had a visit to, to a state visit to Algeria and the main question and also interest of the, the two countries to sustain the strategic partnership, but the main the issue was uh, the energy, and so we we saw that also uh, her uh, visit on uh, this weekend uh, to to Libya. Nonetheless, the Italians also are worried by another issue, which is uh, the migration. But the main uh, uh, I would say at uh, uh, the main point and the uh, aim of her uh, mobility, diplomatic mobility, is uh, energy and to put yes. Italy to position itself on this stance. So there is, the, the West is really concerned about this uh, uh, vital uh, <coughs> element in the world economics. So, um, Umberto, this $8 billion deal seems quite significant, but is this viable and a feasible project given Libya's ongoing political turmoil? Uh, of course, uh, the power struggle uh, in, in Libya uh, is a sword of Damocles upon uh, this deal uh, and upon the relationship between Libya and its main partners. Italy included. Uh, the deal has been uh, uh, welcomed with criticism uh, by the rival authorities uh, in eastern Libya, mm -hmm. uh, in particular uh, Fatih Bashaga, the prime minister of the government of national salvation. Uh, but it's also showing uh, that the interest uh, of Italy still lie in western Libya because of energy consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, Italy, as well as other countries in the Mediterranean, uh, would like to be energy hub, uh, but also because of migration flows, uh, which for Italy departs mainly from Tripolitania, from the western part of the country. So, Abdener, is this likely to deepen the rift between uh, rival Libyan governments, administrations in the east or west, or um, bring about a unity that will help alleviate the country's economic hardships? Are you optimistic? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. I mean, we have to be optimistic on our field, but in this issue of the Libyan, I would say, uh, deadlock or impasse political crisis, it, it, I mean, it's still a power struggle between the two uh, belligerent uh, 
in the in the west and the east and also to some extent i mean there is absence of the international community which i mean how it has to play a major role but it seems like is pushing for the continuation of the continuation of the status quo nonetheless there are countries I and mean, for instance algeria who is trying to I say, uh, help to break through this uh, political impasse and this crisis. So the West also, Western powers, seen the issue or the Libyan dossier from its security perspective and making some rhetoric on the political uh, aspect. So they need to push to find or to help these two, the main belligerents in the Libyan conflicts to break through and to help the uh, special, the UN special envoy, Ms. Batili, to at least have a solid uh, framework and uh, to, to lead to the, uh, the elections yes. that uh, Libyans, uh, the people, are looking for, and like the leaders who are, I think, who seems who seem happy with the status quo. Okay. Because, again. So, uh, Speaking of Algeria quickly, because Algeria doesn't want to see Libya turn into a failed state or a militia state. So there is other actors, so Turkey also has to play a major role in, in, in this. So, Umberto, how will this agreement with Italy impact Turkey's energy and exploration deals with Libya? Is there a link uh, between this deal and the suspension of Turkey's maritime and um, energy exploration uh, deal by a Libyan court? Yes, I think there is a correlation, uh, given the fact that uh, many uh, other countries in the Mediterranean Sea would like to play the role of energy hub. Of course, uh, Turkey's memorandum of understanding uh, was specifically uh, uh, focused on offshore, uh, and this is where the uh, ENI's uh, agreement uh, with Libya uh, came uh, for. Uh, I think we also have to mention the fact that uh, if for Italy it, it was a strategic uh, agreement, for Libya it is as well, uh, because it allows Libya uh, to uh, have uh, a diversification strategy uh, in the energy sector, uh, dealing with Turkey and Italy as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you say, Abdenur? Could an increased cooperation between Libya and Italy upset balances? Uh, within the European Union, especially with Greece, which is against uh, any deal with the Tripoli government? That will be one of the thorny issues. But as uh, your guest stated, I mean, the uh, partnership uh, between uh, uh, Libya and, 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 and Italy, so and this MOA that was signed the, the, the last weekend, even though it was disputed by the other side in the East, but it still has, I would say, some leverage and strong legs in the dynamic of the conflict by adding, for instance, like Turkey is positioning itself in, in, in this sensitive mm -hmm. posture. And also there are other countries, European countries, notably France, for instance, who is a little bit concerned and worried about it because of Again, the mobility of the Italian authorities and bridging through to Algeria and Libya and making the foreign policy determinant based on energy. And also there are other factors that the two countries, Italy and Libya, like the legitimate, with the legitimate government. But the main thing is the international community has to step up and lead, or at least let, give help okay. the other countries like, like Turkey, Qatar and Algeria to mm -hmm. play a role in this crisis. So let's bring in a uh, Russian angle, Umberto, in a charm offensive to secure the next Russia-Africa uh, summit. Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov set out on an Africa tour uh, this past week. What could you tell us about the Russian influence in the continent? Uh, I think it is significant. Uh, it has been in the past few years, uh, especially uh, using uh, hybrid means, uh, such as uh, private military contractors, uh, such as the Wagner Group, uh, which is present uh, in, uh, in Libya, uh, and also in other countries in the Sahel. Uh, and this is a concern not only for uh, Europeans, but other, also for other uh, partners 
else in the south, Algeria, for example, uh, is not happy to see uh, militias uh, and mercenaries uh, uh, roaming around uh, in in the Sahel. Mm. Uh, and so I think this is uh, this is creating havoc and instability. Uh, and this it is an issue that the United States, in particular, uh, is trying to address. For example, with the recent designation uh, designation of Wagner. Uh, as a transnational uh, uh, criminal organization. So we've seen on uh, dinner U.S., Russian and Chinese high-level officials almost in a coordinated manner visiting uh, the African continent this past month. Why has Africa started getting a lot of attention, especially from the United States? Because we know the region is not the most important to the U.S., but what kind of policy does it pursue there? Actually, this is, I mean, goes in the new uh, uh, influence of hemispheres. And Africa has become lately a hub for the superpowers and the regional powers. So, and this is not new. I mean, sure, I mean, lately we have been speaking about what's going on in the political instability, military instability in the Sahel and the, the, the uh, emergence of a new uh, regional states and uh, regional powers, for instance, like t t Turkey. But the uh, Russia has been, I mean, has a traditional presence in Africa that goes back to the uh, Cold War uh, time. But and 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 the well and and the U.S. also has been uh, uh, playing a major role, but in 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 in, in behind the scenes, less military corporations like the the the, the uh, Russians, whereas China has also always been uh, uh, playing a determined role economically in, in, in the region. And all this is intruding great deal the France, for instance, and who is losing its, I would say, uh, political, uh, military, and even intellectually influence in uh, the uh, African Sahel and in West Africa. Mm -hmm. So, Umberto, how are all these visits being perceived on the continent? I mean, how does how deep does mistrust run between uh, Africa and the West? I think Abdanur is right. Um, we are uh, witnessing now the rise of a multipolar world. Uh, we talked about uh, a lot about the end of the US hegemony. Uh, and uh, different uh, uh, global powers, such as Russia and China, but also regional powers, uh, are trying to compete among each other in different uh, geopolitical theaters, including, including Russia, uh, including in Africa. Uh, and this connects with the wider argument about the, the energy. Uh, the energy now is uh, because of the aftermath of the, the conflict in Ukraine, uh, we are witnessing a scramble for Africa, uh, a scramble for African gas in particular, uh, with different projects uh, and uh, conflicting interests among uh, uh, different countries. Let's uh, just hope that they will find an agreement together uh, and avoid the uh, further divisions. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.